So, hi. Hi. I am Linda Quist and I'm in Sweden and uh, my guest today on this live chat about genealogy and all that fun stuff is like Skolden from Canada. Nice Hello. to have you here. Nice I'm, to have I, you here. It is so exciting to be here. And I can't believe it's colder and snowier here than it is there. Yeah, we have had sun all day here in the mm -hmm. south of Sweden. So I've been out in the garden enjoying the sun. So uh, people watching are probably into genealogy and we know that you are in Canada. Yep. Uh, at least they know now because <laughs> I told them. But uh, where are your ancestors from? I am a Carolinian Canadian. I am a transplant from the southern U.S. from the state of South Carolina, uh, from the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, and all of my uh, ancestors are from the Carolinas, Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, basically. Um, I have a, and you and I were talking about this earlier, um, if you think that Linda and I could be distant cousins, it's because my mitochondrial DNA is um, Scandinavian. So I have um, strong roots back to Ireland, uh, a little bit of English, possibly a little Wales, uh, and then um, obviously a, a Scandinavian connection, either Norwegian, Finnish, or Sweden, uh, Swedish there from my mitochondrial DNA, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. So uh, I actually, last week I had Kevin Borland on as a guest and yes. I asked him to uh, send a question to uh, the next guest and he wasn't, he, we didn't know who would be the next guest. So, but uh, I have uh, his question here, so I will play it for you and you will get to answer it. And okay. I have it recorded on my phone, so it's very high tech and I will just press play. <laughs> So what inspired you and what got you into genealogy? Well, it's, there, there are two things. What, the person that got me into genealogy, when I speak publicly, I often say that my grandmother, I think, literally caught me as I was being born and started yelling, your grandfather is, to me as a baby. Uh, I remember growing up and being on her lap and looking at uh, old scrapbooks she had of her family, not so much her nuclear family, but she told us about her heritage and who she was. She was a Dillard from, from Dillard, Georgia, and she was a Lord from Jackson County, uh, South Carolina. Uh, so it was my grandmother and then also my other grandmother, but, but the grandmother I'm talking about was my maternal grandmother. And I can actually tell you a story. Now she got me involved in genealogy and I can tell you a story about how I got involved in genetic genealogy. And I've got some slides here I can throw up. So I'm gonna share my screen and grab that. We should, should, should be sharing now. So this is a part of a slideshow that I had prepared for Roots Tech. Uh, and it was being shown in uh, MitoY DNA's booth. Uh, and we're going to talk about MitoY DNA because that's probably the reason I'm here today. Um, but mitochondrial DNA, there are a lot of people who don't think mitochondrial DNA can, can solve family mysteries. Well, I disagree. Um, mitochondrial DNA has solved family mysteries. It also solves other mysteries like uh, <clears throat> identifying remains of soldiers that have been lost overseas. Um, and identifying people of, of royal heritage, King Richard III and Tsar Nicholas III. And those are the MitoY DNA kits for them on MitoY DNA. Um, and it's mitochondrial DNA can be used to place you in the, the tree of humanity. But for me, it was my grandmother, Eunice Dean Lord Hunt. She was born in 1906. You see the resemblance there? Yeah. You know, we were talking about her cheekbones and how her cheekbones are a lot like my cheekbones and a lot like Linda's cheekbones. Yeah. Uh, this is my Scandinavian side. You can see that beautiful blonde hair. 
So in 1983, when I was finishing up university, this grandmother, and I call her Mama, and her husband, uh, TC, who was Clee Hunt, uh, they came to, to Columbia, South Carolina to take me out to dinner for a graduation gift. And they said to pick the fanciest restaurant, the nicest restaurant that I could find. So I picked this wonderful old um, restaurant in this old house on Senate Street in Columbia. So we go to this restaurant, we're sitting there eating, and my grandmother looks over my shoulder and out a window and says, she had a, a problem with her lung, had cancer in 67, and they took out part of her lung and her, everything like stretched. So she had a strange voice and I always talk with her voice. So you're gonna have to deal with that. So she says to me, I used to watch the children out that window. <laughs> so I looked at her, I looked at my grandfather. I thought that she was having a stroke. I didn't know what was going on. My grandfather's face turned red and cha he changed the subject. Then later on in the same dinner, the same conversation, she says, and I used to play the piano in the parlor there for when the people came to pick the kids they wanted so that, that it would be happy music when they left. I was shocked. I was, I was so confused about what it was she was saying. I was so confused about everything. So my grandmother's life. She was born to Rich and Lord and Nola Dillard. And this is a picture of Rich and Nola. And uh, this is my grandmother, Eunice, and her older sister, Grace. And here is a picture of Grace and Nola and all four children. This is Otis, uh, Grace, my grandmother, Eunice, and their younger sister, Beatrice. And <clears throat> When we were growing up, the only child we ever heard about in this family was Grace, because Grace had, was married to a Baptist preacher, and he was the man who married my grandparents. TC and Mama got married. So we knew, I knew about her, but I didn't know about any other kids. Uh, and <clears throat> according to Eunice, when the family split up, all the children were sent away because my great-grandmother, Nola, was working in a mill and she couldn't take care of all the children at the same time. So according to my grandmother, they were all split up and sent away. And uh, Eunice lived in a children's home in Columbia, South Carolina. And guess what home it was she lived in? What exact building? She, in that restaurant where I took wow. them for dinner. Wow. And these are the windows that were behind me that she was looking at out when she said, I used to watch the children in that garden. Doesn't look much like a garden to me, but I, I believe this is my grandmother in 1931 when she was pregnant with my mother, but she's obvious back visiting the house that she had grown up in. So uh, she also thought that her last name was Lloyd, L-L-O-Y-D, and I found uh, through my research that her brother Otis also thought that his last name was Lloyd uh, when he grew up. So I don't know if the children were told that as a way to try and keep them from reconnecting with the family, but my grandmother reconnected her family with her family in 1923. I have a, a binder where in the beginning of that book, she's writing her name down as, as Eunice Lloyd, and at the end of the book, after she's written down all the names and dates and birth and marriages for her family, she writes down uh, Eunice Dean Lord. So she discovered herself in 1923 where she belonged. Uh, but uh, when I connected to other people in the family, I was told that Eunice was the only child sent away and that she was really not a child of the family, that she was left in a basket on the front porch by more than one person. Now, my grandmother was very strange and she was very, very, very concerned that, that me and my siblings learned our history, learned that we were Dillards and that we were Lords and, and all of this stuff. But she really didn't talk about her nuclear family very much. Um, so when, let's see, I need to catch up. So. I had mitochondrial DNA testing done to try and solve that mystery. And I did. Um, this is my grandmother here on the left, Eunice. This is her brother, Otis. Sister Beatrice and the other sister, Grace. 
Um, if you watch Family Tree, uh, uh, Legacy Family Tree webinars, I did a tech zone a couple of weeks ago for them where I actually talk about the fact that you have three siblings who look alike with blonde hair and one sibling who doesn't with brown hair. And I actually posted this picture as a part of that tech zone and told a cute story about how uh, one of my siblings who shall not be named used to tell me I was adopted because I had blonde hair and she had brown hair. Well, unfortunately for her, my brother also had blonde hair. So <laughs> we weren't really the odd ones out, but it's a cute little tech zone. So if you want to watch it. So that's how I got into uh, DNA was uh, finding out that um, she was uh, somebody who grew up in a children's home. Wow, what a story. Yeah. And we all love those uh, mysteries and want them so solved and we want to know the truth. And uh, yeah, that's really amazing. Yeah. And that was, I didn't really go into it like I could have. I asked Linda if we had hours to talk and she <laughs> said no. <laughs> So if uh, you're the people who, who are watching, if you have any questions for uh, Mike, just uh, type them in the comments and I will try to monitor and uh, ask, ask as we go along. But today we are going to talk about something that you're very involved with that's yes. called uh, MITYDNA and uh, it's a database and um, I, I really like to... Uh, to talk about all those tools that are available for us and uh, the people that are behind them and, uh, and tell the stories. So uh, what is my to y DNA? I, and, and believe it or not, I have more slides if, if, I, <laughs> if I can share those slides as well. Absolutely. Um, my to y DNA was started, um, let's see, am I sharing? My to Y DNA was started uh, back in 2017. Uh, prior to October, um, there were rumors that the existing Y search and MITRE search were going to be shut down uh, because of some issues with, with trying to update all of those people with their privacy. And so I started looking around and talking to people about the fact that this was a, an, an incredible tool for me when I was working on my grandmother's mitochondrial DNA was being able to use that that tool and if the tool went away then I would lose that resource being the selfish person that I am but I also realized that the whole community the entire genealogy community was going to lose that resource of having those DNA databases Y search and minor search so um, once they were shut down and um, actually before they, they shut down, I started gathering together a team of people uh, to work on getting that, uh, getting an, a new DNA database put together. Uh, and it started out with me talking to my buddy, Peter Roberts um, at the FTDNA conference in Houston uh, in uh, I believe October of 2017. And Peter and I kind of vowed to each other that we would, we would do what we could to, to try and make a free and accessible DNA database for Y and mitochondrial DNA and make it freely available to the community. Uh, then uh, lots of talking in the background and I, I talked to um, Gail French, who is with DNA Adoption. Gail, um, I knew Gail's abilities as a DNA uh, database person. And I also knew that he was a former NASA scientist. And if you, uh, my friend Rob Worthen has said to me that, that Gail doesn't make mistakes and you can't make mistakes around Gail because rocket scientists don't make mistakes. They can't make mistakes or lives would be at risk. And so having Gail as part of our, the team was important to me. So. I reached out to Gail and within 20 minutes of me talking to Gail, Rob Worthen came around the corner and was like, I need to talk to you about a project you have, you're thinking about doing. And so uh, Rob jumped in with both feet. And so for a while it was um, Gail, Rob and I working together to put together a team. And we started uh, working on, on the design of the database and the design of the UE and the design of, of everything. 
Uh, and having Rob Worthen with his skills, um, if you don't know, he's with DNA GEDCOM. He's also been very involved with DNA adoption. But having those two people in their brains and having the network of people that we started putting together was great. We started a nonprofit corporation to be the, the, the head of the beast, as it were. Let's see. Um, it's a 501c3 nonprofit company. And we're hoping that we can keep uh, Mito Y DNA free and accessible forever. That is the goal. That's the mission. And uh, so we worked together and we started building a team. Uh, we're a bunch of collaborative genetic genealogists who believe genealogists can have access to a Y mitochondrial DNA database, which includes Y and mitochondrial DNA testing from all available companies of the past. So if you did an old ancestry test where they did Y mitochondrial, you can upload to us. Um, if, even if you just have the paperwork, you can upload your Y right now manually. Sorensen data, National Geographic is shutting down. You can upload your, your Y and your mitochondrial to us from that. Oxford Ancestors, there's more and we can go over that. But that's the basic how and why of how we started. And we've added Kevin Borland who was on last week for you uh, as uh, a board member. And uh, Jamie Nelson was one of the first programmers to join us. She is a programmer from Wikitree. Of course, Peter Roberts, Johnny Pearl is a part of our team. We love Johnny. Uh, and Leanne Kruger, who I think just said hey to me from the Facebook page. So this is the team, but there are other people who are also involved in the background. There are lots of other genetic genealogists who have been giving input and information and supporting us and actually reaching out. We have, uh, we have a wish that we could uh, get uh, Ancestry to, um, to give us, gift us, the Sorensen data, because the Sorensen data had a mandate of always being free and available. And uh, Ancestry used it in early times to work with some of their, um, their uh, ancestry for the world, how everybody's related to everybody, but not specific matching. And we would love to be able to get that uh, from Ancestry and have them donate that back to the community and have us be good stewards of that information. So uh, we have a, a, a genetic genealogist who is working behind the scenes who has connections with both of those who's trying to work with that. So there are a lot of people behind the scenes who are also working with us. Um, and I don't know if I can name them publicly or not, but um, I'm just, I'm not naming them just because they're not one of the people that are, that are uh, the public face of Mito Y DNA. Yeah. So uh, I have uploaded to Mito Y DNA. Of yeah. Course, of course, <laughs> both uh, uh, Y DNA and uh, a couple of empty DNA tests as well. And um, the thing I like is that uh, on other sites you have to like up, you have to take a big Y DNA test and upload it. But here, if oh, if you only took like. Uh, Y37, it's okay to upload that as well. So you right. don't have to do the big Y to upload, but you can. Right. And in the, it, you know, um, we're, we're working on a tool and um, I think one of the big companies got wind that we were going to be working on this tool and maybe implementing that as well. But we, we're working on a tool that will be able to uh, take the Y and the mitochondrial markers from an autosomal DNA test and be able to do haplogroup stuff for people. Um, but that's, that's on the burners, it's not done yet. Um, but those, the autosomal and the mitochondrial that are in the autosomal test is about 25 to 27 to 30 markers. So it's a small amount. Um, and we can, we can also go down to people who had even lower markers. Some of the marker information for some of the historical data that archeologists are finding in some of the digs uh, is is a low marker threshold as well. And if we can take that, we do want to take that. We're encouraging uh, academics to be able to, to work with our data and the aggregate so that they can come up with new theories and new possibilities about how man emerged from, from how we all emerged from Africa, so. Yeah, and another nice thing that I uh, noticed when I, I have been uh, looking at it is that my dad is very alone on his uh, Y DNA, his E, so it's very rare in Sweden. But oh, wow. uh, yeah, but um, uh, on uh, my Y DNA, I can like uh, 
uh, change how many markers, the distance I want, because on on FTDNA, I I'm like stuck with the markers that uh, that they that they think I should uh, should see or or the distance. But here I can look at a, a big distance even at twelve markers if I want to. Yeah, we actually have um, sliders that can do that for you. Um, here, um, if, you, if you're on MitoY DNA, we have a really good navigation system, which let me show you that real quick and then I'll show you about the tools. Our navigation system, here we go, is um, we have a menu navigation bar that's at the top of each one of our pages. And so as you click through different things, um, this is what it looks like if you're a registered user, you get kits and tools added to that. Um, and if there's, if there's news and information announcements, we have that on this part of our, just the very front page, the home page. Uh, we also have information about our Google, uh, our Chrome extension, which right now is what we're using to upload mitochondrial DNA. The manual is on its way. Uh, and then we have the, the Facebook user group. And then of course we also have donation. But to use the help information on MitoY DNA and to get to the tools, you just click on that, um, let me see, 121, no, 75. I'm looking for my page numbers here. So if you just click on tools on the top bar, it'll take you to our tools. And what she's been talking about is we have different tools that some, um, Linda was talking about how you can actually uh, look, uh, use a slider. So. Moving on down here, let's see. Okay, so why compare mitochondrial DNA compare? You can just compare between different kits. You just enter in the kit number and then it'll give you that information. Uh, but specifically, uh, when you want to do matching, you can actually do uh, a, a slider difference of um, three or up to 10 for the differences for the amount and you can identify how many markers you want to check. So 25, 37, and 67. And if you go to one of the results, um, you'll see that um, 25, 37, 67. If I was to throw, and I believe I have them in here, if I can figure out where they are. Of course, I don't have them identified in my information. Here we go. Nope. Um, if you were to do a... Um, a marker test with somebody who was lower if you were doing a match. Like um, there's a certain fellow there from Nogent, France, who is obviously a historical figure. Um, I believe that was, um, sorry, Nicholas? No, or was that, um, I think that was Henry, King Henry, the uh, Richard III. You can see that he, he isn't listed as a marker there and neither is um, Tsar Nicholas, but those two markers are not 37 markers, but we still have them included in that lower, lower realm. Um, so back up to where we were. So the sliders, you can also do that on um, mitochondrial. You can do an HVR1 only or an HVR2 only or the full sequence with the coding re regions as well. And this is what the mitochondrial matches look like uh, for somebody who has my haplo group, which is H1B1T16362C. I never can memorize that. <laughs> um, and then you can also click to, to see information, but to look at a results page, um, for that, the results won't give you if you're uh, if you are not the person who actually is the owner or the manager of the kit, you won't see the coding regions information. We keep that private. Yeah. But if you are not the if you are the person, you will see all the coding region information. But the coding region might have private information in it that we don't want to share publicly with people. So, yeah. So you can you can change the uh, level by uh, using our sliders to slide up and down uh, to the different levels. Yeah, I, I, re I really like that slider because of, of uh, this, that uh, <laughs> my dad has such a rare haplogroup here in Sweden. So uh, he hasn't gotten the matches though yet. So uh, I'm still Well, waiting. maybe we'll get more people to upload. Does he yes. have a lot of matches on, on FTDNA or YSeq? Where did he test? Uh, we tested at uh, Family Tree DNA and uh, no, he has, he has one on uh, 12. So uh, 
Well, if you if you upload to if since you've uploaded to MinorWide DNA, if other people from all the different testing companies and all the historical testing companies upload to MinorWide, you'll be able to see them on our on yeah. our site. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I'm still waiting, so yeah. Upload. Load. <laughs> upload people upload. Yeah. So uh that I, I think this uh this is a great tool. Thank you. I have I have played around with it a little and uh, uploaded it and and uh, I really like the interface where you can yeah you, the, on the slides that you showed um, you see it very really clearly and uh, yeah get a good understanding for how how uh, how the markets work and I think you also uh, could you see what uh, markers that were more like faster and uh, mutated no yeah um <clears throat> I think I'm it, not sure I have one of those that shows that but i can actually go live because i really like that as well because uh, if you know that you have some distance and you see oh that's the one that always changed back and forth so uh, right um, so that that's really great information if, you, if you're looking at a, at a test kit and uh, see that i think I that's look, great i want to go um gail our wonderful fella let's see no i need to go back and I'm telling to the people that are watching, if you have any questions about my DNA, please write them in the comments and we oh, will yeah. answer them. I don't have a screen that, that actually shows that, that specific help information, uh, but we do have the ability to show the different mutations. And plus, yeah. if you are in a, uh, if you are on a page where we're showing the mutations the results page, let's see, 75. I've got a, an index here of all my screens. So I need to go to Y110. Let's see. Eh, that's not the exact one I wanted. So 92. And uh, as I said, I'm in Sweden and uh, here we go. Max is in Canada, so please see the comments right where you're from. I see some are from Sweden, and uh, I saw someone from Canada as well. So, uh, where are you looking from? Um, the we have a, a key at the bottom of this of the results pages, and I don't have a a cop a part of that up. But the key below shows the different colors of the markers. So the orange and the blues. Are, are certain marker values and, and the ones that switch or change a lot. We have a key for that. Yeah. And I don't have a, a visual. Thank you for asking the one thing I don't have a visual. <laughs> Sorry. <for. laughs> but uh, now people get curious, so they, they have to log in and, and check for themselves. Yeah, and we also highlight the changes. So if you have, if there are changes between uh, a marker, when there's a difference between the reference person, which would be this T1 10001 kit, ID Golding, um, the, differences, the differences are highlighted in yellow, so you can easily spot those differences across the board. Yeah, that's, that's what I really like about the interface. It's, it's, uh, it's very visual and, and very, very clear. It's uh, easy to understand. So uh, Thank you, thank you. I had a developer yesterday who uploaded for the first time and I, I got a really beautiful note that said, I really like the UE, I like the design, I like how everything works, and I found a typo. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect except for that one typo. <laughs> So we have Kevin Borland watching from sunny Florida hey, and, Kevin. We have, and we have Kathleen Borland from Malabar in Florida as well. So Yay. yeah, nice to see you here. Hope you are in, enjoying this. So are there any more features you want to show with the Mighty Y DNA? Do you have any more slides you want to share with well, us? I do, I do. We have, um, we have some great um, integrations that go on with um, Mito Y DNA. I just have to find them real quick. Let's see, kits, and so 54. I've never done a presentation like this before, so this is kind of interesting. So if you're on a kits page and you, you want to just view the kit or edit, you, you can edit it and you can, 
you can allow law enforcement, uh, allow academic research, and allow medical research. There are a lot of mitochondrial DNA diseases that are that are handed down and specific hereditary diseases and we encourage medical researchers to do research on the aggregate data to be able to get that information um, you have to opt in to all of these types of shares if you want to share your information with medical researchers academic research or with with law enforcement researchers or investigative genetic genealogists you have to be able to do that but above that um, on a, a kit page, you can add in your information for a uh, wiki tree, um, tree. So I have an external link to my uh, earliest known ancestor, which takes you right off to the wiki tree page that shows um, the actual inheritance of how that DNA has come down. And this is a small bit of this tree. It's a huge tree. Uh, it's a part of wiki tree and it's just my limbs. So we are integrated with Wikitree. Um, you can also add in if you have an ancestry tree or my heritage tree. It's better if they're public trees so that because we're a public site, then our users will be able to see a tree that matches the DNA information. But recently, we have also uh, been added to DNA Painter to DNA Painter's trees. So if you're in DNA Painter, um, DNA Painter is uh, going to pick up the haplogroup and also if you click on a specific person it'll give you the Mito Y DNA kit ID which I blow up here. Oh you have to share your screen. And, oh uh, I'm not sharing? Oh. No. And while you do that we have Johnny Pearl talking about DNA Painter. He's peeling potatoes in sunny London. Hello. <laughs> So back up. So Johnny wrote a blog and here's the, the visual with that, with the information about DNA Painter. And you can, if you click on a person, it will actually show you the information specific to their, their Mito Y DNA kit number or the kit ID. And um, there's also some other information. And I can let this screen hang out on, on the screen. And this is the link to the blog, uh, but I'm sure you can just Google it. And, and get that. Um, we also have uh, uh, an integration with, if you're on a kit page and you see the track button up here, um, you can click on that and it will take you straight off to Scaled Innovations uh, SNP Tracker, which will show you the route that your actual haplogroup took out of Africa and how it ended up. This is my dad's haplogroup. Uh, it, we also have it uh, for mitochondrial DNA as well. Uh, we're going to be adding another button here soon that will give you a uh, SNP age, a timeline of how the SNP follows down through the phylo tree down to your um, subclade or your, your haplogroup. So that's going to be added, probably got added last night and I haven't seen it yet, but that's been added. Um, so there's lots of ways that we are going to be integrating, and I believe there's another integration that I can show you where we're integrating with other people, other projects. I do, but I'm, I'm at a loss. But there are, there are lots of ways that we're trying to integrate with other people, um, especially um, other people that have free tools. We have some developers who have some free tools. I mentioned the, um, the tool that um, Randy White did suggested to us about extracting the autosomal, the mitochondrial and the Y DNA from the autosomal test. So we have lots of tools that we are getting ready to roll out. Fun stuff. Yeah, and uh, did you have this, you had a, a, a slide of um, Wikitree as well. We didn't yes. see that. Did you oh yeah, I show, did. Um, do you want to show that? And, did uh, you show the Wikitree slide? There we go. No. So, so we, we were here. <clears throat> This is an interesting way to do a presentation. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So if you're editing your kit, you can enter in a, a, the wiki tree. You can enter in the profile ID for the, for the guy, or you can enter in just the wiki tree ID, and it will take you to the eight generation pedigree chart for that person, which shows that the Galdens go back to the Galdings. It actually doesn't show it on this page because it's not, the page isn't big enough to include my entire tree back. But um, that's how, and then you can also enter in ancestry trees. And then I rolled off into DNA painters trees. Yeah, yeah. 
Nice. And uh, we have uh, Åsa who's asking, uh, can I upload all YDNI tests? I have a Y37 on my mother's cousin hunting for uh, a father unknown. Yes, so, you, yeah. you can manage kits for other people on Mito Y DNA if you have permission from the person uh, by a um, uh, whatever process you would get to legally be able to have access to their DNA. So when you first log into uh, Mito Y DNA, I don't see if I have that screen. You would need to, um, when you're creating a kit, let's see if I've got that 43 written down here. When you're creating a kit, you have to fill in the information about law enforcement, medical information, but is, do you have permission? You are confirming that you have permissions from the kit owner, owner based on the kit type which means that we expect our users to follow our terms of service and privacy policy where you can only upload kits if you have legal permission to be the manager of those kits. So yes, you can upload other kits. Yep. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Good question. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions, just type them in the comments and uh, we will answer them. So, uh, are there, what else is happening with uh, any news coming out soon or with my DNA? Any news? Or? You're trying to get me to, to, uh, to, to release <laughs> a, information. A, a scoop. Release. I like a scoop. No. <laughs> well, we're, we, we've been working on doing manual uploads. You can, right now, you can do mitochondrial DNA uploads by using the Chrome extension only. And People have been doing it, it's been easy, but there are people who are anti-extensions. Uh, we know that the extension that we have is clean, it's good, um, we wrote it, so we know that, that there's no malware or any other weirdness in our extension. So please, if you are afraid of extensions, you don't need to be afraid of our extension, but uh, we will be releasing a manual upload as well uh, in the, in the near future. Uh, so that will be coming out. I can announce that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. And there's, some other tool. there's some other tools, like there's some tools that should be, uh, like, like I said, it may have been added yesterday and I haven't looked to see that it was added. Yeah. So we will see that when we log the, in. The other thing about tools, Linda, the other thing about tools, we're community supported. We are so community supported. I'm going to pull up, um, some, um, here we go. One, you guys are having fun looking at me uh, scroll around in my different thing. We are completely community supported. Of course, I have a slide for this. Yeah. So we're completely community supported. And that goes along with joining the, the Mito Y DNA user group on Facebook and giving us ideas or, or talking to us. We've had uh, super users who have jumped up and raise their hands and, and are helping people out, especially when the rest of us are at a conference or something like Zach Doherty. I love Zach Doherty. He's the uh, FTDA admin for the uh, Doherty or the Doherty or O Doherty uh, surname project. And he has stepped up and is really jumped in to answer questions in the Facebook users group and with, along with a bunch of other people. Um, and volunteering in that kind of situation for Facebook, that's a great way to get involved. Uh, there's also other things like um, if you know how to build an API uh, so you can help design tools that were, will interface with MinoY DNA. We would love to have somebody join us who knows about marketing and, and we, we, we love programmers and programmers are very expensive but we will shower you with love and adoration like you have never felt before if you come and, and help us with MitoY DNA. Uh, we need administrative help, we need design help, we need promotion help, promotion and marketing. And um, Leanne Kruger is our communications director and she's, uh, she's really been working behind the scenes and she did backflips and well, you wouldn't believe the stuff that Leanne did for us at Roots, or, uh, Roots Tech, so. Uh, jumping in, we, we will make you feel like a, a king or a queen for the year if you come and help us. So there's lots of ways that you can help and also 
the donation. We are completely community supported, meaning that we get all of our funding from the community. So if you want to help us stay free, if you want to help this genealogy community resource, this tool for the community to stay free, contribute uh, in some way. It doesn't have to be financially. You can you can jump in and help as a volunteer in lots of other ways that, that way too. Yeah, and uh, Kevin is also writing on uh, on the comments that uh, a lot of people buy from Amazon and uh, you can choose my DNA as your Amazon Smile charity. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. So I do. Uh, Every time I purchase something and my kids, I forced my kids to do it as well. Yeah, and we have Le Leanne Kruger says, Max does make you feel like very welcome and appreciated. Just welcome and appreciate it. I'm not doing a good enough job with you. Very, Leanne. very welcome. Scoot. <laughs> very yes. welcome and appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. So we love our volunteers. Our volunteers are what what makes us who we are. It's a community based project and it's for the community. So yeah, we think volunteers walk on air. Nice. So, did you have any more more slides to? I've got to... millions of slides. <laughs> yeah, show <laughs> us. <laughs> um, let me see. I could do. Um, I could talk about um, one of the things that I didn't talk about a lot was the 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 fact that mitochondrial DNA is used to identify the remains of service members, and. <clears throat> we don't actually have service members um, mitochondrial DNA loaded to MitoY DNA, uh, but we recognize that mitochondrial DNA is very, very, very specific in that it doesn't degrade quite as quickly as other types of DNA when they, they, you find remains. And so having mitochondrial DNA of soldiers who have passed. Now, I, I used to work with the Canadian Casualty Identification Team in identifying soldiers, which is a great project to work on. And, and you have to work on very close genealogy because these gentlemen passed away from World War I up through 1970 for the Canadian project. So you're working on very, very close genealogy. And if, if anybody says to you, mitochondrial DNA cannot be used in, in current genealogy they aren't well informed. I, I want to say that again, that they aren't well informed. Um, I can also go back here. There's um, a Y-DNA discoveries, just, just for fun. Um, let me find out where that is. That's 110, way back here. I have a gazillion slides. So there's a fun Y-DNA discovery for myself. And um, when I started working on my genealogy, my last name is Golden, G-A-U-L-D-E-N, plain and simple. And I was following along behind a gentleman who was signing in at archives or other libraries where I was into the special rooms and stuff. And he was also a Golden. And I tried to do everything I could to, to make contact with him, to collaborate, to talk. Uh, and I never could catch up with him. But Despite that, in my research, I realized that that researcher and I had common connections. We shared ancient ancestors. But more importantly, through our Y DNA, which is the patrilineal line that goes back for thousands of years from father to son, to father to son, to father to son, to father to son. For me, Golden. Oh, it's not going to do it because I'm not in the slideshow thing. Golden for me turned out to be the root of my name, or my name is the root of Golding. And it doesn't show up very well because it's animated for the slide, but it's Golding, I-N-G instead. Okay. It was, a big, it was a huge revelation and being able to go back through and study all the Galdings, I was able to take my Galdings, I was able to bust down that Galden brick wall and take it all the way back to the Galdings of New Kent County, Virginia. Um, and this is what the Galding uh, matches look like. And then I could also take that information from my matches that, that the discovery that my surname was actually Galding, and I could actually use traditional genealogy to confirm it. And, um, which was really fascinating. 
um, to be able to do that. So why DNA, using why DNA to solve mysteries is another good way to do it. If you have great case studies where you have knocked down a mitochondrial DNA discovery or a Y DNA discovery, I would love to hear about it. And you could post it in our Facebook users group, the Mito Y DNA Facebook users group. We love hearing great stories about how people have knocked down their Y or mitochondrial DNA brick walls. Yeah, that, that's really, <clears throat> really interesting. And uh, I must say, uh, being in Sweden, I'm a little bit jealous of uh, your surnames because here in Sweden, we change surname for like every generation. So yes. uh, we don't have this surname. Uh, Jan's thing. daughter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, and, I'm, and, I'm, I'm Bob's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wait, sorry, I'm a little bit jealous of that, but um, I'm yeah. not. I'm, I'm not jealous. What I'm jealous of is that you are in Sweden and you understand that. And I have this mitochondrial DNA line where I have a ton of people who are whatever daughter uh, yeah. matches to me. I, I, I may be calling you for help, Linda. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do that. If I could ever get back to, to Scandinavia. Yeah. So, and Le uh, Leanne Kruger says also, I think it was when we talked about uh, mtDNA. And just upload your Y or mtDNA kits to help that way. I think that was when we talked about the, the, the names. Yeah. One thing I, I want to share uh, the screen and show you is um, our help system. We have a lot of people, we've had very few um, issues with the site. With our beta testing, we really targeted um, we really targeted the issues that were coming up and we really worked and we, we fixed them. So the issues that, that we are getting, the, the, the very few complaints, we really, really don't have complaints coming in, but the few that we do are usually, sorry to say it, user error. And so I wanted to highlight um, that we do have a very good and robust help system. And back to our navigation system of that navigation bar across the top of every page, uh, we have the frequently asked questions help page. Uh, you just click on that to get to our help system. And the help system will actually tell you very specifically, I'm going to zoom, well, maybe I keep it in this one. Um, the help system tells you very specifically what kind of tests we are working on. And so what we process are Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA tests. Um, we, we take uploads of those files via a CSV, which is a comma separated value or a, a, a spreadsheet type uh, file, or allow for the manual input of Y right now, mitochondrial is coming. We do not process or compare autosomal files. Autosomal DNA files are processed and analyzed at GEDmatch or the various testing companies. I suggest that you upload to GEDmatch for the autosomal. Um, for the Y DNA files, it's short tandem repeats or the STR marker values or the alleles that represent your haplotype, uh, the, set, uh, the set DNA allele values, not to be confused with the haplogroup. We don't actually work with the haplogroup. We add the haplogroup information, but it's the haplotypes. Uh, and we don't currently, and that currently is in big uh, quotation marks, process SNPs right now, or single nucleotide polymorphisms. Um, we are looking at doing that in the future. That's, that's one of the tools that's on our list that I won't talk to you about but I'll let you know as a hint that that's po possibly coming. Uh, and we take uh, all of these great uh, companies here, their information. Uh, we also have another help section um, below. You can click on help and it will take you to uh, a help system. But back on this page, if you click on the name of the type of test that you want to upload, it will take you into information about each one of those tests. Um, let's move down here. So for FTDNA, there's a, a specific help file on our site that has information about how to get your information downloaded and uploaded to MitoY DNA uh, with lots of information on the mitochondrial. So if you have our Chrome extension, 
then on your uh, mitochondrial results page, you will see under the RCRS values that our button appears and you want to download those RCRS values and then upload them. Um, and I just click off here. I can also real quickly uh, talk to you about how to um, download your information and upload it to us. Let me zoom through here. Where do you start? The first thing you do is you register. And to register, it's just the little click the register button in the top right hand corner and it will bring you to the registration page. You put in your full name, your email, and the password. The password has been an issue because people, uh, we're trying to make our site very secure, so we have lots of password information, but right on the page, right below where the password is, there's a, a list of things that you must have included in your password, and a lot of people are missing that. Those that we, we don't have a lot of complaints, but that's one of them is that they can't get the password to work. And when they're directed to check out that list, usually they can get in right away. The, uh, the other really important thing we want people to do is to, to read the terms of service and privacy statement. That is really important to read and understand what you're going to be doing when you're on our site. Uh, and after you read those terms of service and privacy, you cannot register until you have checked off that you have read the terms of service and privacy, that you approve of those things before you can register. So you have to check that off, say that you're 18 or over, and we even have another button here, another note that says, make sure that you've read the terms of service again. Yeah. We really want you to read the terms of service. Can I say that about 15 more times <laughs> before you can actually register? And a lot of people were getting stuck because they weren't actually spending the time to scroll through the terms of service even before clicking that. So we really want people to do that. Um, and then uh, about downloading your information, let's move on. Here we go. To download your results, you first need to download your results file from the company where you bought your DNA kit. You can find out each one of these uh, companies information about specific data that you're going to get from them to upload to us. Uh, and then you download your results to your computer. You can check out the help information. And then you can upload your information for YDNA right now. This is what the manual upload page looks like. You just click in to each one of these values and enter it. If you have a test that has a different value. Like I uh, discovered um, a cousin of mine has a value on one of these that we don't have enough markers for alleles. So we actually have gone in and adjusted that marker value so that there are 30 possibilities rather than just 25. So all you need to do is drop us a note at info at minor y on any changes and we'll, we'll work that out and change it. Um, and you can upload your information very easily. Um, I think I have some more slides. So creating a new kit, once you're in, you go to kits, you click on create new kit, and you get this page again that we saw earlier where you can allow medical research or academic research. You can confirm that you have permission to use that kit if you're managing it for someone else. You can fill in your name. My favorite name to fill in is Bubba Blue. Uh, and then you can fill in all of your earliest known ancestor information, including your haplogroup. And if you're entering manually, you just create uh, because you've already entered in the information manually. If not, you can click on the choose the file from your computer, the one that you downloaded from the company. Choose that file, click on that, uh, make sure it's the right file and click create and you will have a kit. Just make sure that you enter in all the extra information. That's kind of like a little bit of extra stuff. You can edit your kits. Um, so if you didn't, if you want to start allowing for law enforcement, you can do that. Or if you want to add a name or change a birth date of an earliest known ancestor, you can go in and change that information. Um, you can also uh, upload a different file if you need to do that. Um, so there's lots of stuff, lots of information, lots of help, lots of 
hopefully easy thing to do. And if, if you want to ask questions, ask, ask us some questions in the Facebook users group. We will take your questions also at info at MitoYDNA. If you ask your question in the Facebook users group, then the entire group, and they're like 800 people, um, will get um, the knowledge that you might be getting at the same time if you ask the question in the Facebook group. And that's, that's still a part of our whole collaborative. We want to be collaborative. We want to be a part of the community. And we want to collaborate with other genealogists uh, to make this a, a very important resource. It's already becoming an important resource. We already know that. And we're very, very happy with the support uh, that we've gotten so far. We really are. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, uh, I would also like to to ask you something about a, a not about my white DNA, but uh, about some uh, app you like. Yes. To organize your DNA or, uh, yeah. or some other app you use to in your re research. Yes. Um, I am, and and most people who know me know that I am a huge wiki treeer. Um, so I'll, I'm going to share my screen and show you uh, a couple of things that are really fascinating about Wikitree. This is my grandmother's profile page. Um, and the really great thing about Wikitree is that you can actually add, I can add my DNA information and it will populate all of my ancestors. So not only do we see my mitochondrial DNA test here, we also see my autosomal test, and this is on my grandmother's profile. And we see Carolyn Rowell, Ray Leach, and Dave Roach. And I know, I haven't checked Carolyn, she's a new, new person who's shown up, but I know that Ray and Dave both match me and match my grandmother. But if I go back to uh, the next generation, more people end up on that list. Back, this is going my mitochondrial DNA line. Look at all the people here listed for my third great grandmother. And then we get back to my fourth great grandmother and we've got all these DNA matches. So if I go all the way back to Anne Unknown Hall, who is my brick wall, and she probably has our cheeks, Linda. Yep. <laughs> um, I can actually go on her profile. This is somebody who was born in 1793. Obviously she did not do a DNA test, but I did. I can actually go here and click compare right here. And if I have somebody else on here who has done a mitochondrial DNA test, we would be able to click right off and go to um, mito, mito Y DNA. And I can just add another number in here. I don't even know if it's a, let's see, uh, 10542. Let's see who that is. And we can actually compare from Wikitree on mitoydna.org. Let's see, it may throw it out because I may have put in, oh, no, look, we actually have two <laughs> mitochondrial DNA tests. So I actually put in someone else's mitochondrial DNA from Wikitree and it took me straight to mitoydna to do the, uh, do the comparison, which is really cool. You can also do that with yDNA and with autosomal DNA. So here is my cousin, Larry Peterson. I want to do a comparison with him. So I click on the compare and then I click on his GEDmatch number. Oops, that's not what, well, I have to log in anyway, so. But it'll take me off to GEDmatch to actually compare um, that information on, uh, on, on GEDmatch as well. Um, so that's Wikitree, I love Wikitree because of that. Uh, Wikitree also, if I'm on an ancestor's profile, there's another cool tool that I'm actually gonna be talking about in a webinar tomorrow night that's a really cool tool called Root Search. And Root Search, I'd have to add my email. So don't read my email. <laughs> this is my other email. Oh, oops, it's a dot, not a comma. So if I was on Wikitree and I wanted to research Anne Unknown Hall, it automatically fills in all of her information. Um, and it has the husband's name is probably James Hall, but I can click family search, ancestry, find a grave, Google search, my heritage. There's other sites. Um, and you can get to root search just by typing in root search and finding it. It's rootsearch.io. 
Uh, but you can also search these other sites like American Ancestors, Billion Graves. I love genealogy gophers. Have you ever heard of genealogy gophers? No, I haven't. It comes up with, with great information. Um, I don't know if it'll come up for any information on Ann, but it may because there's probably lots of Anns. But um, Ann Putman, but genealogy gopher finds obscure references to people in books or journals and stuff. And you can actually go to the journal and look at the information that's, or the page. So that's really fun. Roots, uh, that's through Roots search.io and it's using the research key on on wiki tree that's yeah. one of my favorite that is that is my thing i do every day i'm on wiki tree i use that research information i use roots search there's other integrations there's an integration that came about just the other day i got to show it to you <laughs> on wiki tree sorry i'm doing yeah. wiki tree stuff. yeah and and we talked about this earlier we don't have so much time and now we're getting all those other tools i want to get started right away to uh to here look at this. Well, this is the last <laughs> one you have to see so there's this great new fan chart and it's going to auto populate and i'm not going to show the name highlights so it's just but look at this fun thing this takes the wiki tree algorithms that shows your um your mitochondrial your x or your y inheritance you say if you're a male or female and bada boom bada bing oh nice yes and that's brand new greg clark just uh posted that the other day so i'm done i'll stop sharing <laughs> <laughs> told you oh. we could be doing this all day yeah now i have a question uh, yes uh tell us something about you that most people don't know I'm a musician. You're a musician? Yes. I studied, um, the first time I sang in public, I was six years old and I sang at the opening convocation for schools in my uh, home county. And I studied vocal, um, I'd studied vocals classically all the way through university. And I sang in competition choirs and performed uh, on stage until my, I think the last time I performed on stage was about seven years ago. Okay, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I don't know who will be guest next week, like <laughs> like for Kevin last week. I didn't yes. know who was coming this week. But uh, I want you to pass on the question for the next week's guest because I want to do this again. Well, so hopefully I will find some guests that want to, to join. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to borrow from Kevin and say... Uh, he wanted to know what got me into genealogy, what got me. And I'm going to ask the next person, who inspired you to become a genealogist? And if they're a genetic genealogist, why did they, who inspired them to get into genetic genealogy? Was it a speaker? Was it somebody in your family? I'd love to know that. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh... If uh, people are watching now, one action for them to do right now to get started with my to y DNA, what would that be? Register. Register. Great. Yep. <laughs> Register. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have uh, the site, and there's also this uh, help, uh, Facebook group they can join. And, uh, yes. Yeah, so great. So I hope people will uh, register. Yeah, and our, our registrations have been going up and up and up in the kit we're growing. So even if you have your kit in and you're not getting a lot of matches today, you can use those sliders and get more matches, but we are growing and it's, it's, we're growing consistently and we're also growing in big spurts every now and then. Um, there'll probably be a big spurt for the next week or so after this talk. So yeah, so we are growing. So join us, join yeah. us in our growth. Help yeah. us grow. Yeah. So, uh, I would like to thank you so very much for, for coming on here today. It was really nice having you. And uh, it was nice to, to hear the story about your, your grandmother and everything, how you got started. And uh, I saw your smile when I posted the picture because before yeah, we, we yeah. did this, I said, you're going to recognize my grandmother's cheeks. Yep. When you, yeah. Yep. I, I, one of our, uh, I want to leave everybody with this. Our motto, our mantra, what we say to each other all the time in our team of people and our volunteers as we're working is Mito Y DNA is doing DNA right. We are doing it right. We're doing it for the community and we're doing it right. 
So thank you very much. Thanks, Linda. And, uh, have a nice day.